Well, this is it, guys. It's my my second top ten favorite fragrances for the year. I do one uh, six, six months apart. This is my second month of the year. And I'm going to get straight into them, but I do want to say one thing before you continue to watch this video. I am going to be talking about fragrances that are from my collection that I own bottles of, and some of these are difficult to get or discontinued. So if you're not interested in this, this is not a top 10 for me to sell to you. This is just me telling you what my current favorite fragrances are. There are a couple of new entries some familiar faces, so to speak. Let's get into it. At number 10, one that's probably been in my top five for the last few years. Um, I should say at this point that, look, on any given day, any of these 10 fragrances could be my absolute favorite um, for the moment. So number 10, I have Sartorial from Penn Halligan's my favorite fougere. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and categorize these a little bit as I, as I go along, um, but nothing tops this um, for me in its particular genre. I, lo I love the fact that it's got a little bit of sweetness and body from uh, the beeswax in here. There is that definite metallic kind of steamy metallic uh, accord in here that really sets this one apart. And yes, Yes, it has it's, um, has slight inspiration in Brut 33 from Fabergé, but Sartorial is the thinking man's Brut. At number nine, perennial favourite of mine, long time love, will always be up, up here and about. It's, it's kind of come back into favour a little bit more. Um, this is 1740 Marquis de Sade by Histoire de Parfum. I think um, I almost take for granted how good this perfume is. It's certainly um, uh, still unique in my in my wardrobe, let alone smelling anything similar to it. That combination of smoky labdanum uh, with immortel. There's a beautiful sort of green artemisia note that runs through it, and it's always always a little bit subversive, this, this kind of scent. Um, and I, each time I wear it, um, I might forget how good it is sometimes because I don't wear it for a couple of months. But recently with me actually shrinking my collection quite a bit, I get to wear these perfumes more and I'm really appreciating really how good this perfume is. At number eight, one that's pretty much been my number one for a couple of years now, it's dropped down the list just because um, I've been enjoying the others a slightly more. Um, I'm going to talk about, after I've done the 10, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I arrived at this at these 10 fragrances. Um, the classic from Guerlain, Habit Rouge. This is the Eau de Toilette. I don't have experience with the Eau de Parfum. I would like to try it, but th this is... I, I don't know what to say about this. Um, I'll, I'll link to reviews I've done with some of these bottles, but uh, it is probably when I think of things like vanilla notes, it's one of my favorite vanilla notes. I really like the lemon uh, in the opening here, although not like a realistic citrus lemon. It's kind of more of a uh, lemon flavor, if you like, um, along with all the other notes, there's a lovely delicate rose that runs through this as well. It, it just is another one, I guess, like, I mean, like 1740 that I, I own nothing else that smells like Abit Rouge. Uh, and, and I know the usual thing to say about this is that it's the, the masculine or masculine marketed version of Shalimar by, by Guerlain as well. Um, I don't have much experience with Shalimar for starters, but but Habit Rouge is, is definitely uh, on its own out there for a unique scent. At number seven, um, one that I've been wearing for a long time through decants and I finally acquired a bottle this year. And uh, so I'm going to be including it. I was always going to include it because I really fell in love with this perfume. And let me just lift this up. 
Au Noir by Dior. Um, okay, so lavender. Yeah, my favourite, my favourite lavender centric scent. Um, but it's not just lavender. There is, there is what I, what seems to me like a like a dark, rich roasted coffee note that runs through here. There is also a bit of a licorice um, in here. Immortel as well. It's really, you know, the name is actually really appropriate. Blackwater, um, although. I feel when you, when you're wearing this, this doesn't doesn't feel like you're wearing water. It's actually quite thick and a dense scent. There, it, it does develop. There are facets to it, but it's not a delicate scent. Um, now I, I got to smell the newer version of this. It's not um, dark green, and uh, it, you know it's it's essentially the same scent, but it has been refined to an inch of its life um it's kind of lost all its brashness and boldness that that's in this one here um and that's what i love about this one um on my skin this performs amazingly uh so here's one that's going to be difficult to find in this form anyway at number six my favorite musk fragrance um it's from parfum d'empire this is Musk Tonkin. Uh, this is the extract. Um, I don't know if they even make the EDP version of this before. This is a beautiful kind of sweaty musk intermingled with a, a variety of floral notes. I was talking about this um, on the live stream I did earlier. Uh, I can't really I, I pick out particular floral notes. It does feel like there is um, something indolic in there like jasmine i would guess jasmine was in there but this was this is i'm just trying to think um this is the only blind buy in my top 10. um so this was really i really lucked out picking this without ever having smelled it um i'm thankful for the people that recommended it to me uh it if you just want a really well done musk accord and florals, it's as simple as that, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful combination. Um, so I think I'm up to number five. Yes, number five. Uh, a bottle that I don't even think has made my top 10 list before and a bottle that I've also had for probably as long as many other of my bottles. Um, this is from Chanel um, and it is Egoist. Now, I Egoist been around since 1990. I only know this version well. So in other words, I have no experience with vintage version Egoist. I can only imagine how good they are because I'm absolutely smitten with, with this version. I think I bought this um, I bought this bottle in about 2016, maybe. Um, I've only I've used less than half of it, actually. That's how, how little I get to, to wear it. But um, so this is, this is probably a current version. Uh, I don't know if it's been changed again since then. But this, again, I guess, what, I guess one thing that sets a lot of these perfumes in this top 10 apart is that I... They're, they're, they're quite unique in that there aren't a lot of perfumes that really come close to mimicking what, what comes into these bottles. Um, you all know it, it's sandalwood, rose, carnation, cinnamon. Um, it's just beautifully blended. And I think one of Jacques Paul's best creations. Number four, um, I believe that this one has recently been discontinued and difficult and obviously difficult to get now. Um, it's from the House of Floris, London. This is 1962. Uh, essentially a woody aromatic Cypress basil um, really stand out in, in the beginning. And yes, this does remind people variously of um, things like the original Polo Green or I, what it reminded me of was Italian Cypress by Tom 
Tom Ford, except there was something about Italian Cypress that I never liked, but I, I really, really like this one. Again, it, there's nothing quite like it in my collection. I'm really happy I have this bottle. Um, I like Floris's whole aesthetic, actually. Um, and it's just, to me, a really refreshing, bold, aromatic, woody fragrance. Uh, and it's perfect, like I, it really always makes me think of outdoors, springtime more than, than any other season as well. Although this is, this I would say is one perfume I could wear all year round, no matter how warm or, or hot it was. At number three, a perennial favourite. Again, this one from the House of Caron and seemingly not on their website anymore, not to, that doesn't mean it won't reappear at some time. This is Third Man Le Trois Simon um, <clears throat> from 1985. What I love about this fragrance, the parts I love about this fragrance is this opening, this citrus opening of lemon bergamot um, is one of the most mouth-watering openings of any perfume that I that I own. You do, I've mentioned this lots of times before, you do have to like clove because it is spicy. Uh, and then uh, it goes through this transition of, uh, this has one of the best developments of a lot of my perfumes. And I love how there are clear chapters in the development of this perfume from from those mouth-watering citruses to the, the spice of the clove, the aromats of the lavender, and then finally this beautiful oak moss, mossy accord um, with other woods in, in the base. It's just a delightful wearing experience, full stop. Um, classical masculine perfume at its best. At number two, I have one from Lattice and Parfumeur, and yes, again, discontinued. <laughs> Um, this is Seville a lob. I again not smelled anything quite like it. It's got this unique um, combination. I guess it's not. I mean, it is unique because I can't. I can't think of anything close to. It what this smells and it's not for everyone um, I just fall in love with this fell in love with this one I have good I also have really strong scent memory associations with this particular perfume as well as my number one um, orange blossoms uh, beeswax incense lavender uh, they're the main players in this um, it, it, it there's this kind of uh, unctuous quality about Seville Alobe. It wears very, very thick. Um, I, I don't know if that's the, the beeswax that, that is making, producing that effect in the perfume um, at all, but it's it certainly, um, the reason I love this perfume is the way it smells, but also it, it, it's a specific time and place for me. I wore it at, 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 um, on a vacation a few years ago, had a great time. And even when my, you know, my son smells this on me, he's reminded of, of that time as well. Um, so, you know, like I, I, I really, really am very grateful that I have a bottle of this. And this, if you can still find it, I, I found, I found, I originally wore the clear bottle with the colourful label and I did take a risk in buying these darker bottles in the newer version of this um, and to me it smells exactly the same, this particular perfume does anyway. So maybe if you want to look for it, um, it might still be around at discounters but this has definitely been discontinued. And we come to number one and this perfume. I, I don't think I've had number one before, um, but what I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my process here. So now that I've only got about 60 or so bottles, um, 
this has actually been a harder process for me to whittle it down to 20 bottles um, and then picking my favorite 10 from, from those. So what I did is once I got it down to 20 bottles, I, I essentially literally just smelled them side by side. Um, you know, if one smelled better, I'd put it to the side, then I'd smell it with, with another one and went through that whole process. And yes, any one of these perfumes in the top 10 could be interchangeable, but what's, what stuck out to me when I was doing that was really how, um, this is another one I think I take for granted a little bit by how good it is. Now, it's not going to be any surprise because you know my love for Dior or Sauvage Parfum. What the surprise is, is that it's the current model of Eau Sauvage Parfum. This is my number one perfume and I, and I have the original black label. I think this edges that out. Um, it's, it's more versatile to me. Um, I, I think I like its brightness while retaining a lot of the original Parfum's characteristics as well. This, uh, it's, I don't want to say mature, it's sophisticated. Um, it's, it's a really well put together perfume, I guess I want to say. I, I'm just hesitant to use the word mature. Like I don't mean for older guys or, or women for that matter. Um, it, it <laughs> you put this next to something like Dior Sauvage, um, i.e. Johnny Depp Sauvage, uh, it's it's chalk and cheese. Like, yes, that's popular, but this is perfume. Um, so that's my number one, Au Sauvage Parfum by Christian Dior. Silver label. Um, I love it at the moment anyway. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed my latest instalment of favorite top 10 perfumes from my collection and I'll see you soon with a new video. It's probably gonna be a review because top 10 season is just about over for me. All right, thanks again for watching everyone. Hit the like button, comment, subscribe. I want you all here. Okay, bye.